plans by both sides, the government and the rebels. That is not to say that they have none. An example would be how a rebel leader would boast of the arsenal, including chemical agents that could literally wipe out a village. Such claims set off panic and fear psychosis in the South, and naturally that disturbed the security forces. A principal characteristic of Sri Lanka's separatist war is that it has been con conducted almost entirely under a state of emergency. This meant the normal law of the land did not apply in many respects. It was thus possible for successive governments to impose censorship and appoint competent authority to monitor all media outlets from time to time. During that era, there have been occasions when newspapers would carry reports with blank spaces to point out the deletions made by the censors. There have also been occasions when a blank page with only the name of the writer and the logo of a column had appeared. Still enough, the censors would also delete maps of Sri Lanka, though copies of them could be obtained from the tourist promotion office or in the Sri Lanka diplomatic mission abroad. However, it is noteworthy that these measures adopted by successive governments were perfectly legal, though the reasons may be arguable times. Other times there were fears of communal passions could be aroused. The editors will once challenged this in the Supreme Court at one occasion. However, all this began to change in the recent years when the present government stepped up its military campaign against the rebel. The Ministry of Defence began to impose restriction. Like guidelines were issued to the media. It was a virtual ban on whatever remained of non-partisan reporting. Media was told they cannot be critical and analyze military strategies, scrutinize promo promotions and transfers within the military, question military procurements and tenders, and discuss anti-war positions. They were also told they cannot obtain information from military officers other than official spokesmen. In fact, just last month we have received another uh, uh, directive from the government that uh, we should also get all information from the police, from the police spokesman. So this would mean that we cannot use our general sources that we can use. Media rights group both Sri Lanka and abroad voiced strong protest at that time. The free media movement said in quotes, these guidelines may have been laughable in any other context, but amusement, amusement unfortunately is not a response available in the climate of fear, intimidation and violence. The character that characterizes the working conditions of media personnel in Sri Lanka. Free media is pivotal to transparency, accountability, and good governance in those courts. This clearly shows that separate the space available to the media in Sri Lanka for reporting conflict is in a non-partisan way has shrunk in the recent years. It is no secret those who brave to defy the official line have died. They were, some were maimed kidnapped, assaulted and intimidated. In fact, there are some 50 journalists, Sri Lankan journalists who are living still overseas but are still return back to the country. This climate, I believe, this is the fertile ground for not only plants but also slums. Never known were the acts of bravery and the heroism of soldier, which is a symbol of national pride. It is, it is similar to the own of a football team being praised for winning the World Cup instead of the skills of the players who scored goals. The question is, can conflict reporting be non-partisan in this climate? I am afraid, in my view, it is near impossible. Another important characteristic of the separatist war in what is called the numbers game, the government which told its story through news releases often gave lower true casualty count and a three-digit figure of rebels dead. In one, if one were to add those over a period of year or more, they would have wiped out the entire population in northern Sri Lanka. This was put to uh, this was put out to boosting the morale of the soldier. Similarly, the rebels gave a low count of their casualties and high numbers of the army. This obviously they were obviously concerned about the morale of their fighters. Added together, it would have wiped out the army's entire strength. We have learned from the everyday game plans by the two sides to the conflict that being non-partisan is no, no easy task. In retrospect, 
the answers lay in the days reportage. Some are inevitable plants, some inevitable slants, and a few that could be considered non -partisan. Thank you. Friends, uh, in, in a conflict situation, I think uh, the most important aspect, apart from the violence, is the And as media persons, uh, we, we deal with information. And uh, for the actors, she made the state actors or the non-state actors. It's their, uh, it's, uh, it's their struggle also uh, to control that information. Referring to the uh, film we had earlier, there was an opinion about what terrorism was. For me, terrorism is, a, is not an issue of law and order. It is neither governance, lack of governance. It is a straight, uh, even a, uh, uh, a straight issue of, it's a political strength. It's all about power. So, while you have, on one hand we have democracy, uh, a set of people have decided that they can use fear through violence to, uh, to access, to uh, lay their access on power. Okay, then uh, we can go into what is an armed struggle against the uh, against a despotic uh, uh, government, but then you know, uh, armed struggle and terrorism uh, can be debated and that is not the issue at this moment. I'll, uh, uh, in, in conflict situations, even in other situations as well, I'll uh, quote Churchill during the Second World War. He said that we shall, uh, he was asked by our tribe only some questions. Why did you not do this? Why did you not do this? Why did you not? Uh, uh, he said, we shall do the right things after having exhausted all other possibilities. So, both uh, in conflict, I think uh, uh, my experience from Punjab was that both the state and the non-state uh, actors, they, uh, they were followers of Churchill. And then uh, uh, when we uh, talk about resolution of conflict, the often quoted uh, thing is that greed poison with poison and nobody is bothered uh, that th those heavy doses of poison, what are they going to do to the patient? Nobody is bothered about that. And then you know, uh, and again, uh, come to, when we are dealing with this, this is my own experience. Every situation on conflict would have, and conflict will uh, arise out, out, of, uh, on, out, out of an issue. It will give rise to a demand, and then there would be a slope. In Punjab, we had the slogan of Khalista. You have it. You you can again um, uh, from the discussion since yesterday. All the conflict situations in South Asia, they are carbon copies. It's the way the state has uh, dealt with them, acted, uh, and the way the non-state actors have uh, behaved. They have carbon copies, some friends, they will disagree with, they are welcome. But then, uh, that's my experience. In Punjab, we had this slogan of Khalistan. Then there were demands, you know, uh, of many sorts floating around. Okay, we want the direct relay from the Golden Temple, and then we want the plane which runs to the Golden Temple, we named, named by the Golden Temple Express. Then we want some Punjabi-speaking areas back to Punjab, then we want more waters. So those were demands, but what was the issue? The issue was again, it's a broad-based issue. Issues were issues were related to that uh, uh, democracy, basically democracy, Indian democracy had stopped to function. The governance issues were there. Issues of uh, uh, justice delivery were there. Issue of the green revolution, uh, producing a surplus which was not put into uh, further linkage was there. So those issues still persist. Again, uh, violence of the AK-47 is gone. Violence in, internally is does exist. I'll come to the approach of the media, and then we'll talk about the plants. So in Punjab, uh, you know, Punjab was one uh, one of the provinces in the uh, pre-partition, which was on the forefront of the freedom struggle. 
So they are still pride you know, about their, their contribution in, in this matter. So when 47 came, despite the partition and despite so many people getting killed and being dislocated because of the partition, that Punjab was still basking in that in the awe of the freedom struggle till right, right up to the 60s or even 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 stretch it into the 70s. Post emergency, there was a disillusionment with the state. But the Punjab media, you can clearly uh, come across that post-emergency uh, the Punjab media, the media profession, I will not talk about the uh, people who manage the media. There was a disillusionment with, uh, disillusionment with the state. So when the cult of militancy or uh, the uh, separatist voices started coming up, especially Pedramada uh, factor came up, came up, he was seen as something extraordinary which has appeared that many people who thought that which, what we could not do, this is a guy who would challenge the might of the state. So a lot of media cited him and then glorified him. Again, uh, as friends have said, there was no training, there had been no such incidents in, uh, in or around Punjab where the Punjabi journalists could relate to or could come out, okay, this happened there, or there was no reference point for it. So Pindravali factor, all the uh, people around him were first seen or glorified that these are guys who are going to challenge the might of the Indian state. The might of the Indian state, again those issues that it is uh, undemocratic, it took away our rights during emergency and all that. Punjab, uh, incidentally, Punjab was, uh, during emergency also, Punjab did not rest. The, the Shromi Akhandal, which is now the ruling party, was perhaps one of the few parties which sustained, which was successful to sustain an agitation throughout. And that has also been seen as a, a factor which contributed into the conflict of the terrorism in Iran. So, but when uh, the journalists started viewing, uh, when, when uh, the non-state actors, when even uh, the, uh, the boys around Pindavala, they started feeling the, uh, the heat of power. They started also going astray. They lost what? They lost out on their religion. The media was, uh, the media got disillusioned, then the population do start to face. The central command of that so-called militant movement, that was broken and uh, uh, militant organizations or terrorist organizations, they mushroomed all over Punjab. Media was also disillusioned by these movements, by these organizations. So, uh, by that time, the entire state, functioning, uh, functioning of the state, legislature, executive, and the judiciary had come to a standstill. The only visible form of state was the Punjabis. When the Punjabis started countering the terrorists, then the media shifted another way, like the Indians, uh, like India did shifted from the Soviet bloc because Soviet bloc collapsed, Pindavali collapsed. So, you know, like the Indian uh, state, we moved uh, to USA, so the Punjab media also moved to, towards the Punjab, uh, Punjab peace. So, these were again uh, some uh, uh, issues which came up. Then Punjab police became heroes. When uh, in 92 or 93, when all these uh, the guns went silent, all of a sudden we saw the resurgence of uh, judicial actors. The same Punjab police officers who were heroes then now became villains. Again a lopsided approach. In, in, the entire, uh, in, uh, in this entire uh, uh, process, my friend said uh, that there are trees. Uh, in, two, uh, in two years, if we invite him uh, next time here, He'll say that he'll he walk through a plantation of plants. We walk through that, and uh, the number of agencies from the government with, uh, who are working there is phenomenal. Uh, some are just CID police or the IB. Then uh, in, the, in the border areas, RAW is also active. Now they call counter intelligence, and then the, the, the political parties have it. Some political leaders have it. Businesses have it. They keep on. There, there are so many vested interests that the uh, that 
it is almost impossible to sift through what is a plant or what is not a plant. In Punjab, what happened was we could we could uh, we were flooded by plants which came from the state, and we could make out. And subsequently, with our own contacts, we could even ask those guys, okay, what is this? Why are you sending us this? What are you aiming at? And then you know, gradually you would, okay, tone down the, uh, maybe accept a plant and then you tone it down. But the problem was when you were getting plants from the military organizations. You don't know, uh, you, there was no way to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, seek the authenticity of that uh, uh, plant. They were on, on the Khalistan commander would send you uh, a press note, you don't know what it is. Where do, where do you, uh, you don't have telephone numbers, then we didn't have emails. There was nothing available at that time. So, uh, again, uh, once again, I would like, uh, it, a journalist should not be non partisan He has to take a position. And if you have decided to uh, report conflict, then you also decided to put your life, the life of your families at stake. It is your decision you took. Otherwise go uh, report fashion, report a football game, that's fine, do it. You decided that you want to report conflict and now is the issue. Where are you going to position yourself? Are you going to position yourself with the state? Are you going to position with yourself with, with, with the non-state actors? Or are you going to position yourself with the people at heart who are affected? I personally would place myself with the people. And I would, I am not bothered whether it is a state actor or a non-state actor. If you position yourself with the people, uh, the threats won't come to you, uh, take it from me. I reported terrorism, I, I, I wrote against the police. There was there was a, a press. There was one day I just uh, share uh, this uh, event. Uh, in those days, Punjabis used to uh, come out with bulletins. They had killed about six seven. One day they had killed about six seven uh, uh, so called militants or terrorists, whatever. Because I don't in Punjab I did not differentiate with them. Uh, then and surprisingly, what was it? Uh, they had pulled out one out of the jail, they were taking him for recovery of arms, another group attacked them. So, uh, he got killed, neither the police guys who were uh, 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 escorting him got killed, nor the people who attacked him, they got injured. Then, uh, okay, we, we were taking him to court, we were attacked, we were, uh, we were trying to catch him, we caught him, then he shot himself. Okay, if he had a gun, why didn't he shoot him? Uh, so all of that, those, those I, I put out the story that so many uh, terrorists, all under custody, were eliminated by Punjab police. KPS killed himself called me up. He says, what are you doing? But I have not done anything. It is your own press note that is telling you that. He says, but you should not have said it. But I am doing what you told me. <laughs> so uh, you do that. And similarly, in post and the, uh, then we can open this house for discussion. There was this case of farmer suicide. We had an uh, organization by the movement against state, state repression, which had become active during uh, terrorism. They, they had come out, uh, they would work with that disappearances cases also, and uh, the person who was doing in uh, uh, the post uh, uh, violence period, they started working on suicide by farmers. So he comes up with a press note that 38 far, uh, farmers in one village have committed suicide over the last 10 years. I said, now this is... He used the press note, I just said to that they have claimed and all that this is it. Somebody got disturbed. You know, how can this be possible? So they said that this is a terrorist organization, they, they were supporting militants, now they are trying to gain and uh, take um, uh, sympathy, they came out with this. So, and they reported uh, Chokidar, uh, uh, the, uh, the village uh, Chokidar uh, register that no suicide has been reported in that village. Now, I, I put out that story also. 
Now normally I would come under criticism that okay, you are uh, first you took that opinion, now you took this opinion. Yeah, two opinions do take, uh, they do exist. So it is my duty to uh, report them. I reported them as my duty. But then I said, okay, now there is truth. It cannot be, the truth cannot be between those, these two uh, places. Either one, uh, one of them has to be telling the truth or the other. So I went to those places. I discovered there were uh, there were suicides. I, I talked to them, they said we don't report suicides because if we report suicide, there are two things that it's a stigma. The stigma goes up to the third or fourth generation then nobody, none of the children will get married or something. So we, we do not report suicide and it is like that Punjabi uh, pride, you know, that gets hurt that we... Again, uh, there were most, the most cases I reported were people who had consumed pesticides. So the, uh, another uh, reporter was uh, hauled up. Now what they put out the story was that these were farmers who were spraying pesticide in the field and a cloud of uh, pesticide developed around them. They inhaled that pesticide. <laughs> they fell, but and because there was no wind movement, the cloud persisted, and they kept on inhaling that even uh, during their unconscious state, and finally they died. Uh, oh my God, my God! Now I again went to that place. That is southern Punjab in Sangroo district. I again went to that place from that from a primary health center to PGI. I went into every hospital, inquired how many in the last 10 years, how many cases of uh, farmers who uh, inhaled uh, pesticide did you come across. There was Dr. Devan, a forensic expert, God bless his soul, he's no more. He said in his career of 37 years as a uh, forensic expert, he had come across four cases. I, now, uh, uh, what I did was followed it up. I went in and I went in only to those cases who had not consumed pesticide as a, as a means to commit suicide. So I came out how people died. People died by uh, drowning themselves, hanging from the ceiling, uh, holding live electricity wires, uh, splitting their wrists, uh, plunging a dagger into themselves, a the, the number of things. Uh, Atul Bihari Vajpayee became uh, Prime Minister for the second time and it is customary that they should visit the Golden Temple. He was there, I got up and in, me, in the meanwhile these plants started taking place. My entire tribe, my friends, they started ridiculing me and they started calling me the suicide expert. <laughs> so even that did not get me because I was aware because that this is happening and people are not ready to accept. Again, uh, no, uh, Vajpayee wanted to say, I, I asked Vajpayee that uh, see, uh, uh, people were committing, uh, farmers were committing suicide in uh, Karnataka and uh, Andhra Pradesh. Now farmers in your granary are committing suicide. Do we expect a change in the agriculture policy? He was about to say something. Our chief, Mr. Prakash Singh Badal, whispers into his ear. And uh, Vajpayee, in his uh, typical uh, style of diction, he said, Mujhe Punjab ke kisano ke ghar <laughs> so everybody again laughed at me. I went back to those villages. I went out of those villages to the surrounding villages and I we started working with those organizations. We found more suicides. Ultimately, the same Prakasana. On the floor of the house, he admitted there were suicides. They, they came out that we'll pay, though they haven't paid a compensation of 2.5 times because they put in uh, <coughs> electronic media went in, they, that was accepted. And the psyche of the people changed uh, over the while. They started it's that pride, that sense of false pride that, okay, the, my, somebody in my house has uh, committed suicide. Yeah, they, they came out, okay, this is our pain, this is our distress. And they started to go, they were, okay, this is uh, conspicuous consumption and all that, you know, nonsense came out. So ultimately, if you, uh, I decided that I, I'm going to stay with these people who, who are suffering. You, you decide, you take on. That's my uh, uh, submission for this day, and so I think uh, we now open for the... Uh, I just want to elaborate on one thing. Said about the surrender of Maoist 
this is Shobha Mandi. And when the news came up, it was accompanied by photographs of Mandi giving interview inside a forest. And surprisingly, for us, those who covered the conflict zones, the reports were carried when into leading newspapers and reported by journalists who doesn't generally visit the jungle. A month back, a month later, a senior reporter in our house who covers the police bit, he just broke it with all evidences and documents that during the time the interview took place, Mandi was already in police custody. And that too for three months. Yes. So that's how the stories came up. Uh, Mandi gave the interview inside the forest, but in police custody. So this is how stories are planned. Now, how to distinguish? And I also want to share my experiences of planting stories. I mean, I didn't want to plant it, but I was asked to plant. Uh, it was, uh, I covered the entire period of conflict over the nano plant in Shingo. It started in 2006. That time I was working with a Bengali daily article. And I was a stranger, of course. So I had to do whatever my office was asking me to do. I was going visiting the villages, talking to the villagers. And it was clear, it was clear enough for anyone who would land up there that the locals don't want the plant there. But the house, my house, was a pro-government and uh, the instruction was clear enough. Look, there is no protest against the government's decision. People all want the plant. So you have to make people convinced that they are all the protest that is coming up are being fueled by outsiders. Outside elements. So, this is how things went on. One day there was a huge rally of protesters. The day, it was 25th September, I recall, or 27th September 2006, when uh, the check distribution started from the PD office. <coughs> that day, the peasants who had disagreed to part with the land rallied to the PD office and decided to get out. Now, my office said, don't cover it. So I said, what should I do? They said, uh, isn't there any uh, pro-industry rally there? Uh, no, there is no, not at least today. Right? Then talk to the local leaders, why aren't they organizing a rally? So I went to the CPIM Junal Committee office in Singur, and there was a district committee member, Mr. Diva Bordash, was sitting in the room, trying to convince some locals. Uh, I went there and gave my identity, and as soon as I heard that I am from that daily, Programmentary, I got a warm welcome. And then I said that uh, the opposition are organizing such a huge rally there, uh, the media will cover it. Why don't you organize the rally also? He said, it's no problem, give me an hour. So we waited there. Uh, 15 to 20 people came. A banner, a pro industry banner was brought on. And then uh, my photographer who was there, he instructed the rally how to shape how it to so, that, <laughs> so that in photograph uh, you don't understand that it was only 15 to 20 people. The banner will be in front, the people will be in row in 6 to 7 in the front row and uh, I think 6 to 7, uh, 2, 3, 4, it makes 20. No one beyond that will be visible. So it will seem to be a huge rally. And they stood in front of the general committee office. They didn't even walk. The frame was set, and they were only asked to say. In frame, it looked like they are marching towards the. And the next day, it was the page one story. So this is how stories come up. And uh, the most unfortunate thing is that, despite doing this all for my house, uh, one fine morning, I, uh, my boss called me up and said, "That what are you doing in Shingu?" What? I am filing stories every day. No, you are uh, collaborating with the opposition. I am collaborating with the opposition. How? I am filing anti stories. The peasants are just uh, after me. Just see that they will just beat me up. Say, no, the police have sent report against you. 
Yes, and then found that the SDP of